Hello, Sydney. Have you ever wondered why we keep coming back to horror games that make us the victims rather than the hero? Why instead of facing monsters with a bazooka, we're crouched behind bushes, praying they won't find us? Hello everyone and welcome to the world of asymmetrical horror games where being outnumbered isn't a handicap, it's the main attraction. So today we're going to dive into the history of asymmetrical horror. So what is asymmetrical horror? Well, it's a group of players working together to survive and one player, the hunter, whose only goal is to make sure they don't. It's survival horror, but with a sadistic twist. One that taps into our most primal fears of being stalked, outnumbered, and helpless. But unlike any horror, this genre didn't appear out of thin air. The groundwork was laid decades ago, back in the age of tabletop games like Dungeons and Dragons. Your skin grows cold from your first glimpse of the enormous beast. It's a product of your imagination. Survival depends on a quick, decisive move. Our choices are limited. Imagine a group of friends, one of whom is the dungeon master, aka the orchestrator of doom. From those roots, we started to get an idea of a dynamic where one person plays the villain and the others the victim. The idea crossed into early video games too. Titles like Splatterhouse gave us the feeling of a helpless underdog against grotesque monsters. You had games like Alone in the Dark and as well as Clock Tower for the NES that never made it to America, well, just until recently with Clock Tower Rewind, which was basically one of the best horror games with a cat and mouse vibe. We were tasting the thrill even if true asymmetrical multiplayer hadn't hit the scene yet. Fast forward to the late 90s and early 2000s, games like Resident Evil Outbreak made us realize how horror could work when players were forced to cooperate against overwhelming odds. The real breakthrough came when developers started asking, what if one player was the monster? And that's how we got Evolve. Now Evolve wasn't the first game to feature asymmetrical play, but it sure was one of the first to put players on opposing teams with different goals. You had a team of hunters facing off against one player as the monster, who, surprise surprise, evolved to get stronger. Evolve was like a multiplayer horror movie, but it also let people live out their monster fantasies. But let's be honest, sometimes it's just fun to be the scary one. Now we're going to jump way ahead to 2016, Dead by Daylight. Dead by Daylight came along and changed everything. It took the fear of being chased and the thrill of barely escaping and multiplied it by four. In Dead by Daylight, four players are survivors whose goal is to escape and one player is the killer whose goal, well, not to let them escape. The genius of Dead by Daylight lies in, honestly, its simplicity. Sure, there are objectives like fixing generators, but it all boils down to a psychological cat and mouse. And nothing gives you a jump scare quite like hearing that heartbeat getting louder. Dead by Daylight wasn't just a hit with players, it became a gathering point for horror fans. They pulled horror legends like Michael Myers, Freddy Krueger into the game. Suddenly you weren't just being chased by some generic monster, you were being hunted by icons of horror. Thanks to Dead by Daylight, developers realized that asymmetrical horror could be more than just a niche. Soon, other games joined the fray. Friday 13th the game let us play as Jason Voorhees with counselors scrambling to avoid a one-way ticket to Camp Crystal Lake. And now games like Killer Clowns from Outer Space the game are carrying the torch with a delight mix of scares and campy horror. It's asymmetrical horror for a new generation and yes, it's as wild as it sounds. So where do we draw the line between horror and comedy in these games? Because nothing says horrific like a six foot clown jumping out of a spaceship. So why do we keep coming back to these games that feel really repetitive and helpless? It's all about that survival instinct. In asymmetrical horror, we're hardwired to feel vulnerable. When you're up against something you can't predict, especially a real player who could be thinking anything, it taps into some of our most primal fears. And here's the thing, as terrifying as asymmetrical horror is, it's also full of unintentionally hilarious moments. Ever played Dead by Daylight as a killer and accidentally lost a survivor you swore was hiding behind the tree? Or better yet, had your friend scream and run in a complete circle back to you? It's a mix of terror comedy that no other genre can really replicate. Horror lets us laugh at our fear 
even if that laughter is really 90% nervousness. So what's next for asymmetrical horror? With advances in AI, VR, and game design, the possibilities are kind of endless. Imagine AI-driven killers that adapt to your playstyle, or VR that lets you feel the killer breathing down your neck. It actually would be kind of fun. But ultimately, no matter how much the genre evolves, the appeal of asymmetrical horror will stay the same. We love being afraid, and nothing is more terrifying than knowing that someone, somewhere, is hunting you. So whether you're a fan of being the stalker, or the one running for dear life, which is usually me, Asymmetrical horror games tap into something we can all relate to. The thrill of the chase, the fun of surviving with others, and that sweet satisfaction when you finally make it out alive. Or you don't, who knows. So what do you guys think of asymmetrical horror? Will it stay around? Does it have a big future in the horror genre? Is it also one of your favorite genres of horror to play? Guys, I want to thank you for joining me on this journey down the world of asymmetrical horror. Be sure, if you like this video, to just give it a like. And also, drop your favorite horror game in the comments. It doesn't have to be asymmetrical horror. I just want to know what your favorite one is. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.